I think one of the most, um, you know, common misconceptions around retrieval or RAG is this idea that it is an alternative to, or it's an adversary to the notion of fine tuning or alignment or other tools for using data to improve uh, AI systems. In fact, a lot of probably what's going to be unique in our perspective, although not at all unprecedented in the academic literature or in, in years of work around information retrieval systems, I'll note, but a lot of what might be new in terms of you know, what we're sharing relative to the AI dialogue is actually how you can use data and use fine tuning to improve retrieval systems and in turn use retrieval systems alongside uh, 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 things like fine tuning. I like to think about um, off the shelf large language models as kind of like, um, uh, you know, think think about them as a like a college student or or a new medical student, and we're trying to get that medical student to work in a real production setting to let's say go diagnose a, a complex cancer patient. Part of doing that is giving them access to the right information, to the patient's chart, to the medical literature. Even an expert oncologist can't diagnose that patient if they don't have that data access, that that ability to retrieve information. That's kind of like retrieval or RAG. Now, also, you know, even with the access to the patient's chart and all the relevant data, an untrained medical student is not going to be able to make accurate decisions around an oncology patient. They still need training. They need training about general decision making, and actually, they need training about how to retrieve information accurately. If anyone's ever looked at the medical literature, it's 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 a nightmare of of, of jargon, um, and that goes with most subdomains. So, in fact. Um, this med student still needs training on both how to reason and, and even how to retrieve. And that's a metaphor for fine-tuning LLMs and actually fine-tuning retrieval systems. So I think about the AI space as having a bunch of tools that are actually very complementary. There's tools for giving better access to data, ex to external data and context to the AI model. There are tools for improving how the model makes decisions. That's you know something like fine-tuning. And they all work together. And I'll note that just as a company, we're a, a data labeling and development platform that we make it programmatic like software development, but we basically, you know, are a platform for helping you label and develop and tag data for all sorts of use cases, not just RAG or retrieval. So as much as we're incredibly excited and invested in retrieval and RAG, you know, this is one of many things that we support. So we, we kind of have a neutral perspective here. What I'd say is that, you know, our view, though, is that re retrieval and this kind of RAG paradigm is going to be pretty robust, although it's going to change. Even now, we see a lot of exciting progress around um, uh, large language models with bigger context windows or bigger prompts, um, like Gemini, for example, uh, from our partners over at Google. Uh, we think long context windows are going to get you know, bigger and cheaper, and they're definitely going to be another tool in the toolkit. That is, that is critical to consider. But we also do think that RAG is going to be a robust staple of present and future LLM system architecture. You know, Getting an AI system to work is not just about ease of use and, and even not just about accuracy. It's also about cost, latency, and modularity, especially as these systems move to production. You know, that's one reason, one very basic reason of why you know, a RAG system is going to, we think, be a robust staple. People are not going to want to just dump everything into a giant model, especially ones where the context window and the tuning of it are finicky. They're going to want to break it apart into modular pieces that are cheaper and faster. And then also just, you know, there will be many settings where, um, you know, you're not just trying to dump in a single document. You're doing retrieval and say question answering or summarization or reasoning over a massive corpus and uh, long context window models won't be the solution there even if you have infinite budget and are fine with the, the latency and modularity trade-offs, that at a high level, getting retrieval systems to work, A, is not trivial, meaning it doesn't just work out of the box, and B, it's actually an area where people have studied for uh, you know and, and, and built concepts for, uh, for decades. It's actually building on very old and classical concepts that a lot of AI Twitter may have forgotten, but that are actually you know, very well-founded. On the first point, you know, goes back to the metaphor I started with of, you know, think about an out-of-the-box LLM system, including the retrieval system, as kind of that med student. Step one is give them access to the medical literature, to the patient's chart, et cetera, but they still need training on how to search the medical literature, on what terms to use, on how to read a patient's chart. In other words, uh, 
retrieval systems still need to be tuned for the areas they're working in. Many of our customers are seeing that some of the biggest error modes in their systems, you know, think Q&A systems over you know, domain-specific corpora, some of the biggest error modes are in the retrieval step where the you know out of the box embeddings retrieval re-ranker models you know basically the out of the box rag system is not able to parse these domain specific documents or 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 content so and and the last thing to say there quickly is actually if you go back to the original paper that coined the term rag um, from some of our friends over at Stanford their quote unquote dumb baseline was actually just the out of the box models and the whole paper was about fine tuning RAG systems. So this concept that you know RAG doesn't just work out of the box with out of the box embeddings, out of the box configurations, et cetera, is literally in the original RAG paper. And it's quite intuitive, at least if you think about it in the way that I laid out. Last thing, you know, how do we actually go and get RAG to work in custom settings? So we think about it in kind of three uh, buckets. One is chunking. So many of you who are practitioners of retrieval and RAG systems understand that, you know, chunking, basically splitting up, you know, documents and corpora into smaller bite-sized pieces that can be retrieved by the system and fed into the context of an LM is one of the, the tricky and finicky parts of, of getting the system like this to work. Strategy number two is actually tuning or fine-tuning the RAG system. And again, going back to that that med student metaphor, this is basically, you know, teaching the med student of how to search the medical literature, what domain specific terms to use, how to read the patient's chart. What does this actually boil down to? Usually, it's using labeled data to tune either the embeddings or the retrieval or re-ranker model to perform well on the specific type of data, domain, and use case at hand. And number three, we're seeing an increasing amount of activity around. Uh, tagging and uh, and 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 labeling and indexing the data. In other words, not everything has to be or should be a vectorized embedding. Often it makes a lot of sense to go through and basically pre-index your data by tagging and labeling it and just search over that in addition to the vectorized form. All of these concepts, again, by the way, are really classical ones that have root in you know the decades old field of information retrieval. So I'd encourage all of you, if you get really jazzed up about this topic, to go build, you know, buy an IR textbook and, and see that what we're saying is not new in many ways. It's building on old concepts, but obviously translating them into some pretty cool new techniques in tech 